This is the biggest mistake I see in your in the contracting business. What circumstances a homeowner will face for fake an invoice to get actually higher amounts from an insurance company? Yeah. One of the services that is least understood that a contractor gives to a homeowner in a casualty event. What happens when they do provide estimates to insurance companies? Okay. How does so, it change the game? Jen, I would like to start with a very complicated issue or question that I get a lot on this channel and maybe hear your advice to both homeowners and the contractors. The issue is a lot of roofing companies have two different price sets. One is when they do retail work, another one when they work with insurance companies. A lot of time homeowners asking for bid and contractors refuse to provide a bid. And uh, like we actually practice it in our company too. We would always provide an estimate, but companies, roofing contractors don't wanna give estimate or bid the job if they know it's insurance claim. And I always bring analogy from medical field. You know, if you go to the doctor, you have kind of walk in cash price and you have a price if they work with the insurance company, which usually really higher. Is it ethical uh, and uh, legally correct for the business um, owner or business practice uh, to practice this, to, to charge more insurance companies, to have different pricing? And what advice would you give to business owners who do both retail work and insurance work? Because often if we give a price and then insurance you know, could pay more or you know will pay more, there is a big dilemma for a lot of business owners and a lot of them actually don't even bid those jobs saying, no, we don't do it. We just sign a contract just to work with the insurance company. What's your take on the you know, entire situation and dilemma for the business owners to provide those estimates? Well, I think they're good questions, but there's more than one question in there, okay? Because when it, you know, one question is, is it ethical to, to charge you know, one market one thing and another market another? That's the first question. The second is, you know, whether you provide the bids up front or not. These are two different questions. I would say to the first, um, of course, not only is it ethical to charge one market different than another market, you must. You must if you want to stay in business. Um, and, and the reason is to understand the risks uh, that you take as a contractor. If you have a customer that is in your, you know, if, if it's a local you're a local roofing company and it's a local person and it's there um, and they call you on the phone, uh, you've got a price for that. Your price can necessarily be lower than, uh, than in other situations. Why? Because the homeowner is calling you, you don't have a commission, you don't have remote staging, it's in your neighborhood. If the homeowner says, I'm ready to pay you and I have cash, you have no risk. You're dealing with the decision maker and you could sign it, and the risk is less. The risk, you're gonna get paid quicker, okay? And, and it can be cheaper for you to do that particular job. Now, that's a different market, and because it's cheaper for you to do it, you can maybe charge a cheaper price. But if you are now have a storm, or it's a cat storm, and there's a casualty event, and there's a casualty all in the particular neighborhood, prices may be more, it may be more difficult, you're dealing with an insurance company. If you're dealing with an insurance company, everybody knows in dealing with an insurance company, uh, you don't know if they're gonna pay your price. You don't know if they're going to pay you on time. They're very likely gonna delay you. They're likely to make you have four or five different inspections to be able to prove certain things. And that costs time, it costs money. It's a risk of not getting paid. If I have a risk of not getting paid, think about a bank. They're really good at analyzing risk of whether they lend you money or not. If they know that you're gonna pay and you're gonna pay on time, it's one price. If you're somebody that doesn't pay on time, if you're somebody that gives them a hard time to get the check out of them, then the, the risk is higher. So I think it depends on your market. And I think that contractors, you know, when they're looking at this, they're doing certain things subconsciously. They're subconsciously banking the fact that dealing with an insurance company may be more of a risk, okay, and may, at, at risk of not getting paid, uh, of getting paid less, of not getting the RCV at the end of the job. So I think that there's baked in risk. So I don't think that it's necessarily unethical 
it not only is it not only unethical, I think it's necessary to charge a market one thing versus another. Um, if you're in a cat storm, let's say three states away, and you now have travel, and you've got risk associated with that, and you've got remote staging, and you've got hotel rooms, and you've got different things that are causing and tra travel back and forth, uh, necessarily your costs are going to be more. Just the fact, okay, let's take, uh, let's take a good example right now. Let's take Lake Charles, Louisiana. Um, there were four, four major cat storms. Uh, you have had major cat storms. You had several cat storms. You had two hurricanes hit the same place within months. Okay. Um, you have COVID. You have COVID pricing. Um, because of this, the prices, the, the cost that it takes the contractor to actually do that job is more than it would if it was a neighborhood calling in. What the carriers do, which is unethical, is they pretend the markets are the same. They pretend the costs are the same. So the, what the carriers are doing sometimes is they're bringing in a competition to the to the contractor. Okay, they bring in a competition to the Saying contractor. Someone can do it cheaper. They can do it cheaper. They can cut out the commission. And when the when the when the insurance company brings in the contractor. They guarantee that contractor the money, whereas the other contractor is not guaranteed the money. It's not, the, it's not fair. It's not the same market. It's not the same risk. And so I think that what contractors need to do is they have to get better at explaining their own risk. What contractors have to do is they have to get better at explaining their own risk of their, of their business. Okay, and why it is more expensive, or 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 what the baked in risks associated with not getting paid. How would you explain it to the homeowner? Oftentimes, homeowner receives the estimates from insurance company, and oftentimes it's a homeowner who wants to save money or pocket insurance difference, and they uh, shopping around and trying to get it for less. If a contractor knows that it's insurance claim is involved, but homeowner is asking them to provide a bid because they're trying to save, how would you explain to the homeowner, you know, uh, what to do if, you know, give advice to the homeowner in this situation? Should he do it? Because if homeowner, let's say homeowner have a paperwork in hands for $15,000, but he knows he can get it um, at 12. You know, contractor can do it at 12. It's a cash job for him. You know, down payment, final payment, doesn't have to deal with anything. Is it smart on homeowner's behalf? And a, a contractor be, uh, behalf to do it? Well, look, I, I think, um, you know, there is, in the sense of a homeowner, there is an align there's a certain alignment of interest and there's a certain conflict of interest. And I think um, that it is really good for roofing companies to be upfront to explain the business to them. Um, upfront, be very upfront on it, is to say, look, the best thing I believe for you to do, Mr. or Mrs. Homeowner, is to fix your property well, with quality and on time. That's your most important thing because my guess is that for most people and for the homeowner you're probably talking to, the home is the largest asset they have. Most of their net worth is tied up in the asset of the home. Homeowners often, they, they you know, will try to pocket money or they will try to fix it cheaply. In the end, it's, it's worse off generally. okay. If you fix something cheap and you don't fix things well, in the long run, it catches up to you. So I think the first, that the first thing is to say to the homeowner, look, I believe that I want to do a good job. I want to do it on time and I want to do a quality job. Most people will pay for quality. They understand the difference of doing things on time and they do doing things well. They have a, they have a saying, you know, contractors, I often say you get you have three choices. You have three things. You have you can do it on time, you can do it with quality, and you can do it with a cheap with a cheap price. You get to pick two out of the three. Okay? So doing things on time and doing things quality, if you explain to that homeowner that that's where we have an alignment of interest. Because I think fixing your home well is important for you and your family and your asset as a whole. If you don't fix things well, you can have mold. You can have leaks. Most roofers, what are they doing is you got to explain the importance of the roofing system to a building. Um, if you actually look at a building, the most important function of a building is keeping out the weather. It's keeping out water. 
particular. That's the most important function of a building is controlling water through pipes and from coming in and out. If you make a mistake or you, you uh, don't do your roofing system well, you don't realize that this catches up to you and water is like a cancer when it gets inside your, gets inside your building. So I think the most important thing is to explain to the customer what you actually are doing and the importance of the roofing system or any contracting system with the building. Uh, the second is to explain that you and I, Mr. Homeowner and I, you and I have an alignment of interest when it comes to the insurance company. We both want it fixed quality and we want it fixed well. So we have an alignment of interest between each other. The insurance company has a conflict of interest. They don't want you to fix it well. Okay, and they, they don't want you necessarily, they don't want to do it on time either. They don't want to pay you on time. So we have an alignment of interest with regard to fixing the property. And you and I can do better if we're together. On the other hand, if you decide you want to play into the games of the insurance company and try to save the insurance company money or play around you know, with games on that kind of thing, I think in the end, that ends up playing in the insurance company's hands. So let's get it straight here in the beginning, Mr. Mrs. Omar. Do we want to understand that we have an alignment of interest and to, for me to be able to fix your home well? And if we do, then commit to me that I get to do the job well. And I'll commit to you that I'll work very hard to document the damage properly. And if I get the job, I'll do the quality well. I think if you explain that to the homeowner, they understand, you know, they understand why it is a value, the service that you're planning to do. And one of the services that is least understood that a contractor gives to a homeowner in a casualty event is an alignment of interest with the carrier. It's an alignment of interest uh, with that. This game playing of I'm going to get a high price and give it to the insurance company and get a low price over here and collect it, you know, give them this bid, but actually do that bid. Yeah. Guess what? That's dangerous. That could be insurance fraud. Okay. Um, the other thing is the bids are probably the same. The high bid and the low bid are probably the same because the low bid is probably less of a scope and less of a quality, a job. And, and if you really dive into it, if you really dive into it, the market is generally the market. You touched on it, but I think there is a third big factor why all of this is actually taking place. It's a little bit of a brainwashing and a little bit of accusation because what's happening is that insurance adjuster, uh, you know, homeowners by default usually trust their insurance, right? So what's happening is, um, you know, if, if a contractor is trying to explain why he charged what he charged, but the homeowners believes that their insurance company is paying $15,000, right? And if contractor is willing to do the job for 12, for them, there's accusation of greed. You know, give me the price. And if, if contractor hesitates to give a price or if the price is lower to, to just, it's very hard for the contractor to justify that he needs to charge more. You know, if I give you a price for 12,000, but you have a paperwork for 15, you know, you will call me greedy. And I, I, it's very hard argument for the contractor to explain why I have to charge $3,000 more to work with the insurance claim. But the homeowner also does not always understand. He doesn't get to keep the $3,000. He needs to fake invoice to get the rest of the money from insurance company. I actually have been asked by homeowners in my career where, you know, we would do the job. It's like, Misha, you know, you know, we're signing job for 11,000, but it's actually insurance claim. I wouldn't, I didn't even know it was insurance claim. I'm like, well, you didn't tell me, you know, um, you know, I came in, I did the job and now they're like, well, can you give me a bigger invoice? I'm like, no, I cannot give you a bigger invoice. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And uh, what circumstances homeowner will face for faking invoice to get actually higher amounts from an insurance company. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously there's insurance fraud on both sides of the equation. The second part of your question, Dimitri, um, I think was very important as well, because your question was, should the contractor delay giving the bid, should be hesitant giving the bid or the price to the customer? This is the biggest mistake I see in your in the contracting business. The absolute, if I, could, if I could pinpoint the number one mistake 
that causes roofing contractors money. It is that they do not give the bids up front to the insurance companies. This is the biggest single mistake. I understand why they don't do it, why they don't do but, they, but they're mistaken. I mean, I tell you why they don't do it. A lot of them don't know how to do it. <laughs> well, that may be first. That may be first, but I think the reason they don't know how to do it is they don't want to learn how to do it. I mean, if you want to know how to do something, you can do If you know that it's important, they don't know it's important to do it up front. And that's why they don't So work. what happens when they do provide estimates to insurance companies? Okay. How does so, it change the game? Well, let's first discuss why don't they? Yeah. Because it's more important to tell you. I want to tell you not what, what to do, but why. Okay. The why is understanding the why is more important. Okay. Um, they don't want to do it because they're afraid that they're going to give a bid and the bid is going to be too high. And the insurance company is going to turn down the claim because the bid is too high and try to find someone to underbid them. That's the number one reason, because they fear the competition. Um, and so they hold back their price. They're also afraid that if they show how expensive it is going to be, then the adjuster is going to turn down the roof or the causation, that the price is going to affect the causation decision, the whether to replace the roof or not. They're too afraid of that. And so what contractors do is they play possum. They play possum or ostrich sticking their head in the sand, okay? And they, they walk the roof to try to get the roof bought first. And then they hit them with the bill of what it's going to be. This is a big mistake. Why? Because the roofers fail to understand, or some do, of how insurance reserves are set and how insurance claims are paid. Um, many roofers do this. And they find the, the adjuster say, OK, replace the roof. And then once they give the actual bid, they say, no, an engineer comes in, turns it down, and they reverse the decision. And they don't understand why. Here's why. When you do not give a bid, the adjuster who is on the roof for the first time, he calls in a number. When he thinks the roof needs to be replaced, he calls in a number of how much he thinks the roof's going to be. That sets an insurance reserve. If that insurance reserve is too low, then the account, the money account, the reserve sets a money account, is not, and there's not enough of a budget to do the job. And if you come in higher later, there's not enough budget to do the job, then they try to turn the roof down. So the biggest mistake is the failure to set the reserve early. On the other hand, if you give, if you give the bid up front and it's here, the reserve will get set there, or there's more likelihood the reserve gets set at your so number. So will adjuster call in that bid? The, the reserve, they have to? Yeah, almost Even all, if they deny? Oh, well, not if they deny it, yeah. but if they're going to buy the roof, they have to guess when they're at the property, most adjusters, most carrier adjusters, are calling in the reserve at that moment. They're guessing how but, much it's going to cost. But they're calling their number, not the bid number. That's right. So the problem is they're calling in their number that's too low. If you have a contracting bid for the customer and you hand it to them and you say, here's how much it's going to cost, there's more of a likelihood that the appropriate level reserve is set with the appropriate level. And that, that can influence the amount of reserve. Can this is the biggest mistake. Can an adjuster uh, deny the bid and still uh, submit only his price, his bid? He can. But adjusters, there is this misconception that adjusters... Um, uh, want to call in a low reserve. Adjusters don't want to call in a low reserve. They don't care. They don't, number one, they don't care, but they don't want to look bad. The worst thing you can do to your customer, which the carrier is their customer, is to fail to meet their expectations. So if you as, a car if you, as an adjuster call in too low a reserve, you look bad. On the other hand, if you call in a reserve that's appropriate, and maybe you negotiate a little bit, then you look good. So calling in a low reserve is bad for the adjuster. It's the opposite of what people think. Sure. So if you set the if you send in a bid and the bid is appropriate, sets it at the appropriate level, the chance of everything going smoothly is is greater. It will go faster and it can go higher of benefits than if you wait. Because the biggest mistake I see in claims, the reason claims don't get paid or they take a long time to get paid, is because somebody made a mistake sometimes. And set the reserve too low. 
And you know what? It's hard to go up. It's easy to go down. So this is the biggest mistake. If Now, what needs to happen is before you give the bid, you have to have a discussion with the consumer, with the property owner, to explain why you have an alignment of interest with that bid and explain what's going to happen. They're going to go in and they're going to find somebody who's cheaper, who doesn't do a quality job, who does it badly to save them money. It's going to happen. Instead, you have to explain to the customer the service and the alignment of interest and that all of theirs has a conflict of interest. And that is why. And if you set that stage in the beginning, then, then, then claims will get paid better.